Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this is a series of videos about Venus in various signs. And this particular video is for Venus in Aquarius. If you need to know what your Venus is in, please scroll down below this video and I will have a link there that takes you to a cafe astrology page where they have um, listed all the years and all the dates and you can find it out very easily that way. Sometimes you need to know your time of birth. Venus can never be too far from your sun sign. It can only be like two signs back in the same sign as your sun sign or two signs ahead. And so it kind of narrows it down a bit. But also if you scroll down you will find examples of my private readings and you can take a look at those as well. So in terms of this particular sign, Aquarius, we're looking at a very individualistic type of an influence. Before I get into that, I just want to say that Venus itself relates to how you love. We don't all have the same concept when it comes to romantic love. Some people would rather be buddies with their love partner. Some people want the grandiose demonstrations of love. And some people just almost want like a business partner where they are very practical in their relationship. They get a lot accomplished and that's what suits them. Teach their own, you know, as far as I would think about it. Venus is also about artistic expression and artistic appreciation. So how you express yourself creatively is indicated in the Venus sign, as well as what types of art you appreciate. So there are many things that Venus represents besides just romantic love. It can also be your friendships. And it also, it also can be your relationship to money. So let's get into Venus and Aquarius. Aquarius is a sign that is ruled, I would say, primarily by Uranus. And it's also ruled by Saturn. Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. That is a more traditional type of a sign. But when you think about Uranus, you're talking about this wild card kind of an influence where anything can happen at any time. And that is very erratic. And it gives Aquarians, whether it's a sun in Aquarius, moon, Venus, almost like this electric quality. Actually, Aquarius rules the 11th house, which deals with electricity and deals with the internet. Although I also have seen that the third house that Gemini rules is connected to the internet due to the communication angle that the third house represents. But with the 11th house, we're talking about the masses. So this can be the house that deals with all kinds of like uh, mass media and things like that, Hollywood. And I bring this up because I'm talking about this charisma that Venus and Aquarius can have. And it's not the typical thing that we associate with attractiveness. When you think of the word attractive, you typically will think of beauty, being handsome, whatever you want to call it. And yet attraction has is about magnetism. Venus in Aquarius has this unusual quality about itself that lends itself to people being attracted and they don't quite know why. They just think that the person has a certain aura. And there are some sun sign Aquarians who had this star quality, like for instance, Paul Newman or James Dean. 
to name a couple. And they were matinee idols who happened to be born under the sign of Aquarius. Uh, Robert Redford is an Aquarius as well. And so this kind of thing is transferred also into Venus and Aquarius, Venus being the planet of love and beauty. So that can definitely translate into how a person carries themselves, you know, in terms of their, the way they dress, the way that other people see them. And with Venus and Aquarius, there's a bohemian kind of a, a look a lot of times. So a hippie type of a look, not a hundred percent of the time because, uh, Venus and Aquarius can be quite the contrarian. They don't necessarily like to conform. So for instance, if you have somebody, and this could be also true of Venus, of Aquarius rising, as well as the sun in Aquarius, if you have uh, somebody with this prominent Aquarius, they may, if they live in a, like a, a very hippie type of an area, like in the United States, let's say they live in Portland, Oregon. I, I've never been there, but I just assume it's like that. They may dress in conservative clothing just to be different. The whole idea of Aquarius is they want to be original. Janis Joplin had Aquarius rising, even though her son was technically in Capricorn, a late degree Capricorn, but technically that, and she had a moon in Cancer. So she had a more traditional side to her, believe it or not. But that wild Aquarius hippie vibe came out because of the way she dressed, the way she carried herself. And the rising sign is the the public image, okay? And with Venus and Aquarius, some of this can transfer to that as well. This type of person is attracted to hippies and offbeat types of people as well. People who don't conform to the standards of society. So whatever that means for this day and age, maybe in the 80s, it was someone who was a punk or goth, you know, and now I don't know what the, the latest thing is, but whatever it is, they may be cutting edge. There's that cutting edge quality. Aquarius is a visionary type of a person. So it's always three, 10 steps ahead, something far beyond the masses. And this can actually extend to their appreciation of art because Venus and Aquarius can really dig art that is, uh, for instance, with music, electronic music, with, with like paintings. Uh, I was I was thinking before I, I did this uh, video, I was thinking of Jackson Pollock. And if some of you know who he was, he, I guess he might have popularized the, or maybe even invented, I'm not quite sure, the type of modern art where you just drip paint on the canvas and call it some grand statement. By the way, I have Venus in Aquarius. So if I sound a little snarky when I'm describing this, it's because whenever I go to a modern art exhibit, I'm always like suppressing giggles because I can't tell if they're trolling us or if they really are uh, making a statement. But I, I get a kick out of it because I know that it's provoking people into thinking in a different way. And that is very important. Remember that Aquarius is an air sign. So air signs, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, they're all about communicating ideas. And they, in the, in the uh, Tarot, they are the swords and it's all about thought, communication. And so making a statement is very important for Venus and Aquarius. And so if it's in Art, it's going to be either a statement on politics, a statement on a way of being. And uh, speaking of electronic music, 
I was recently listening to John Cage, and I really hadn't listened to him before. And I was really enjoying it. I found it very peaceful and interesting as well. It wasn't that I was uh, listening it to be cool and to be intellectual. I really was enjoying it. So this is another form of experimental art that the person may be into. There's always with um, Aquarius, whether it's Venus or the sun, there can be a know-it-all type of quality that other people find irritating. But these people really want to connect intellectually with others. So if they are attracted to someone, they may be attracted to, and I'm talking about in a romantic relationship, they may be attracted to the person's mind and really get off on that person's the way that person thinks and their view of life. And that will be the equivalent of what some other sign might be attracted to in terms of physical attributes of another person. So that is important to note as well, because this is not an emotional placement. This is not a traditionally romantic type of a Venus. And so if this person gets with somebody who has Venus and Leo, the opposite sign of Aquarius, and maybe that person has the sun in either Leo or Libra, they, that person may get irritated and say that this person is, may accuse this person of not caring or of being too cold, whatever. And it's so unfair because this person may not be traditionally romantic, but it doesn't mean that they would not make a good partner. They, this um, placement in, in Aquarius, I mean, uh, in Venus, can be very loyal to the right person, but that person has to stimulate them mentally and has to allow them a lot of freedom. That's the other thing. They cannot take possessive people. So... If you're in love with somebody who happens to be Venus and Aquarius, give them a lot of breathing room. Now, let's talk about the different uh, sun signs. If the sun is in Sagittarius, this is going to increase the bohemian factor. The person is going to really love to be free, different, you know, outside of the mainstream. And there's a rebellious quality with both of these signs, with Sagittarius and with Aquarius. So they enjoy getting a rise out of others with their kind of um, unconventional ways, I would put it. Love is an adventure to these people. They're not looking for, you know what I thought about? I am so happy that I am getting more and more into thinking about the tarot because the tarot is something that I learned long after I've known about astrology. And I was just thinking about the Fool card, and that actually connects with Uranus, which is the ruler of Aquarius. So when I, was, when I read this thing that I had typed out here, Love is an Adventure, I was thinking about the Fool in the Major Arcana, the Zero card, and how the Fool is going off on this new journey and has no clue of where he is going but is just chomping at the bit to tr just take off and explore. And that's how the sun in Sag with Venus in Aquarius is when they're thinking about that other person. This is freedom loving to the max. This is somebody that wants their freedom, that has to have it. They It can be to the point where they're noncommittal, where they're unwilling to settle down with somebody, or they may have to have a very wide berth. They will not allow anybody to tie them down in the traditional way. And if the person that they are involved with happens to be a son in Aquarius, chances are that person will totally understand that and respect it. But if it, if it happened to be like a a Scorpio, which 
that in itself would be an interesting combination. It might not be so much, so it all depends. Okay, let's look at Sun and Capricorn. This kind of makes the Capricorn person loosen their stuffy shirt, you know, unbutton that top button of their shirt. Because Venus in Aquarius causes the Sun and Capricorn person to view love in a more offbeat way way than a traditional way. And they may be attracted to people who are off the beaten path. So you could get this oddball couple where the Sun and Capricorn person is involved with somebody who's much like their polar opposite in terms of the way they present themselves. And that person may not be totally out there in all aspects. It may just be in, maybe that person is an artist and this person the Capricorn person works in a, in a bank or something, and they, they are totally different in many ways. They may have totally different political views or something like that, but they still connect romantically. The Capricorn, the son of Capricorn person may question some of the traditional values or traditions involving romantic love. Maybe they're more inclined to live with somebody rather than get married. I would find that very hard to believe, but um, it can happen. Stranger things have happened because the influence of Uranus is present with this Venus and they may, um, in all other areas of their life, be very white bread. And in this area, they're just a little bit different. Maybe this makes them more independent and solitary, which is hard to make a Capricorn more like that because actually Capricorn can be a loner sign and this can make them much more somebody who doesn't require a romantic relationship. They may be happy to have their friendships, the platonic relationships. With the sun in Aquarius, this certainly adds to the independent nature and the contrarian tendencies. The eccentric qualities of Aquarius are enhanced. Because Aquarius is a fixed sign, Aquarius is known sometimes for being stubborn, and this certainly can enhance that as well. Um <laughs> I put stubborn AF <laughs> and um, this can also, and, and, and what I want to say about that is that in relationships, obviously, sometimes you have to compromise with a sign like Aquarius, there can be a tendency and I'm talking about obviously with the sun as well, there can be a tendency to dig in your heels, to be uncooperative, to refuse to see other another person's point of view, because a lot of times Mercury will also be in the same sign as the sun sign. And that will be your, the way that you think so that your thinking can be quite rigid, even though Aquarius is known for being very progressive and um, broad minded, there can be like this definite stubborn streak in the person. And this can wreak havoc on a relationship. Seriously, if you cannot bend, there's a, there's a saying in the Tao that I always seem to mangle, basically saying that the branch that is too rigid snaps in the storm or whatever, and the flexible branch, it can kind of bend with the wind and so that is a very important thing that you have to cultivate if it doesn't come naturally to you. And there's a, a super duper detachment with this, with the sun and Venus in Aquarius. And depending on who you get with, it may not be a big deal. But for some people it can be off-putting. They can be like, does this person have a shred of emotion? They always seem like they are so above it all. And actually, you may be terrified of any uh, strong 
expression of emotion. And I would even wonder if even something positive just kind of turns you off too, if it's too effusive. If somebody comes to you and says, oh, I love you so much, that could like make your skin crawl perhaps because deep down inside that threatens your sense of autonomy. Or, you know, you feel easily claustrophobic that it's a hidden demand that you have to match it with an equally effusive declaration of love. And you may not have it in you. And you may not want to ever have it within you. You may want to always be buddies with your partner. And like I say, I have Venus in Aquarius. And I have said that I prefer somebody to say they like me than they love me. Because to me, love is a very loaded word. And sometimes it smacks of obligation and manipulation rather than true affection. So I prefer somebody likes me and likes my company. And, um, and yeah, you know, it's really, um, when my partner said to me that, I was his best friend. That was like the highest compliment he ever paid me in all the years we've been together because I was like, wow, you know, I would, I, I care about that more than anything else. And he always tells me that he loves me, but that meant so much to me. That's Venus and Aquarius for you. So did I sound like Sarah Palin for a moment? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Sarah Palin is a double Aquarius, sun and moon. And which, you know, is why she has such a unusual, uh, you know, personality. And then she has Leo rising. So she always has managed to grab the spotlight with her wackiness, you know. So that's a perfect example of the Aquarian um, energy. And she is known uh, politically as being conservative. I don't really believe that in some um, regard in certain instances, uh, some of her stances don't seem like that. They almost seem like kind of, um, radical, but the thing is that th I, as I said before, Aquarius is also ruled by Saturn. So you have somebody like Ronald Reagan, who was a Democrat, became a Republican and, uh, positioned himself to stand for conservative values. And, um, and yet, you know, he had changed, uh, he had changed course. Aquarius is known for being unpredictable because of that Uranian energy. So these are political examples, but there you go. So sun and Pisces, this can make the Pisces person more independent romantically because Pisces sometimes can be a dependent sign. Pisces is a water sign. It's a mutable sign, but it's ruled by Neptune. So it tends to be quite diffused in its influence and it's not necessarily very distinct in its own right. So it's very influenced by others and very open to that influence. It doesn't shy away from that influence. So this can make the Pisces sun sign more likely to be firm because it's in a, in a fixed sign, this Venus, and more rational because it is an air sign. So it's kind of detached from the emotional sides. Emotions are irrational. A lot of people think that emotions, uh, you know, they worship emotion for whatever reason, but emotions are really irrational. They are reactions to life. That's what they are. And so when people are emotional, they're not necessarily thinking clearly. And this gives the Pisces person the ability in love to maybe make better choices than sometimes they may make. They can, the, the problem that they can have is they may be attracted to strange types of people and being a son in Pisces, they're not judgmental typically. So they are open to whoever comes down the pike and they may be attracted to 
people from all kinds of walks of life, whether even the people that are, are um, doing God knows what, they may be attracted to very offbeat people, but hopefully not too problematic. Sun in Pisces wants to be a healer. So you can get into some problems that way if there's not enough discernment. But be, but I said they're more rational, so I think that they may be able to see when something is a red flag for them. Artistically, they can be more experimental. You know, Pisces being a water sign has a tendency to be very um, sentimental. Uh, well, you know, just into the emotions. Okay. I was thinking about George Harrison because he was a Pisces and he did an experimental album, but I don't know if his Venus was in Aquarius. So I should check that out, but, uh, definitely Pisces can make music that is, um, quite, um, ahead of its time. So let's talk about Aries, sun and Aries. Well, we know that Aries people can be volatile. This will make the Aries person more detached in their relationships and less volatile. This can make them more intellectual and less, I was going to say ADHD because Aries people love to just be doing this, doing that. They have so many things that they, so many activities that they may be involved in. And this may get them to slow down a little bit and be more in the mind, particularly with the people that they are socializing with and their romantic partner. This can lessen the sensuality and create more of a value for platonic relationships. And even in the love arena, really valuing the intellect of the other person more than just that physical side of things can balance off the sun and Aries. It does tend to increase, though, the independence factor and the being headstrong because you're combining, especially with the headstrong, you're combining a cardinal sun sign, which is like, I'm going to initiate something. I'm going to do something with this um, fixed Venus sign that is, you know, much more stubborn. And it's could be like my way or the highway. So that has to be watched out for. But actually, you know, Aries and Aquarius form a sextile. So I think it's an interesting combination. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Take care of yourselves. Bye.